Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Knights at the Dirty Table. I am your host, not from Lemonster, Merrick Henry. And today we are gonna be talking about probably the surprise smash of the month of October, Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix, directed by Todd Phillips. Today with me, I have fellow Knights, Nick Santos. Hello. Sir Jack Lowe. Hello. And Sir Patrick McNair. Ahoy, ahoy. Thoughts on Joker, plain and simple. I'm gonna start with one of our newest Knights, Patrick. Your thoughts on Joker. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was it was so different. But it, in in this way that was like, it was an origin story, but it wasn't. And it, like I could see this being like a one the a series of bad days leading up to the one bad day, and I just thought it was really well done. And I can see that like, if you didn't tell me the other origin stories of the Joker, this is almost exactly how I would see it in some form of, of or another. Excellent. Uh, so I yeah I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. Excellent. Nick, over to you, our newest night. Yeah, I mean, overall, I, I really enjoy the movie. I look at movies, I mean, I, I work, do we Of movies? course, you work on film sets. I work sets. on film sets, so I look at them always, I look at them, I think, a little differently, but, you know, who, everyone kind of says that, so I don't want to be, like, that guy. <laughs> everyone knows that guy, everyone <laughs> The guy that, that went guy. to school for this. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I look at it, and overall, I, I really enjoyed it, and I, I mean, I can see definitely some of the backlash, so, like, it wasn't obviously a perfect film, but, I mean, I... I've always been a big fan of origin stories and prequels, so I've been like, you know, excluding Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> um, oh man, okay. Uh, I won't waste our time on this episode. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, so you know, overall, I enjoyed it, but I definitely understand the backlash that came with it, though. So fair. We're gonna dive into that in just a few moments, folks. So don't worry, we won't leave you hanging. Jack, your thoughts on Joker? We actually saw it together in the theater, so yeah. I'm very curious what you think. I um, mm, I feel a lot of things. Okay, so. I, I thought it was well shot. Um, I thought the cinematography was really good. That whole staircase bit really well, really well sells the imagery of what he goes through at each point. Uh, that he gets to that staircase um, in both emotion and direction up or down the stairs. Um, but like that's that's just like these small moments of like, oh man, they really captured this gritty New York. Um, Joaquin Phoenix was amazing. Uh, his portrayal was fantastic. The writing and the pacing, I thought, was kind of a mess. I thought things were a little on the nose at times, uh, especially that speech at the end. Uh, when he's on the, the sh- Murray yeah, Franklin on the show? Mar- the Murray Franklin show, yeah. Yeah, obviously we're talking spoilers here, guys. I mean, I'm Yeah, gonna... see the movie before you do this. Why would you watch reactions to that? You better put that in the title. <laughs> yeah. Um, spoilers. <laughs> Joker, spoilers. The biggest problems I have with it are that I find it's disjointed in a way that, while maybe is in line with the character, um, doesn't make for good storytelling. And I have a big problem with uh, a a society that glorifies and is inspired by a murder, a triple murder uh, in a public area that, that I don't think realistically would ever be seen as a positive and certainly wouldn't lead to a social movement the way it does in this in the movie. It's okay, suspension of disbelief. Um, Got to drive the plot forward and have that happen. I think the Joker is aimless without Batman. Um, I don't think he works as well in this movie, at least. And he's not the schemer. He's not even like a prankster. He's not in any way capable of leading this movement that he somehow created. And I think that part of what makes the Joker interesting is how he's a different. He's he's so different from Batman. And while there are references, and there's a lot of Batman in a way, um, I just feel that he's not really capable of doing any of the things that we've seen Joker do in other iterations based on this iteration. I liked it, but I just... mm. See, I feel... I don't know if this Joker was meant to lead said movement. I think the movement is looking to him to lead, but I don't think this Joker really... Yeah, so so no surprise. Obviously, I I like the movie a lot. I'm a big fan of Joaquin Phoenix's performance. I definitely um, oh, think nailed the performance. He, there oh, should oh, yeah. certainly be a nomination based on the fact alone that he was involved in every single sequence in the film. There were maybe ten shots at most where he wasn't in yeah. frame, but he was on set. 
the whole time of production. 100%. I mean, you got to you got to give a nomination for that. I know the for, Academy for, does not like superhero movies, but you can't ignore this one, folks. Come oh, yeah. on, uh, for your consideration. Um, but I think with this Joker, in regards to leading a movement, I don't think he would. I would actually i don't want a sequel for this i would rather keep yeah, with the don't. mantra yeah, of just yeah. leaving this as a separate movie a one and done but i would love a graphic novel or a set of comics that continue this world of okay. what would it be called joker 1981 or something Not i don't know i wouldn't be mad if they shoehorned him into the batman and him and robert bat and bat i think joaquin that. phoenix oh, would yeah. rather die than be <laughs> involved in that i in know some it would way. never happen but i'd kind of want that um I just, I think this is not meant, obviously it's not meant to be the Joker that we all kind of know and love. And this Joker's... Oh, I did that on purpose. Because it kept <laughs> oh, falling over. Oh, uh, I see. It's also hanging in the balance. <laughs> yep. And no, this I is see. what happens at the Push end. Push them over we'll, the we'll give him. We'll give him the nice funeral funeral bed. There, he's nice and cozy. Um, I just, I, I don't think this is meant to be a stronger Joker as we've seen in other iterations. It's meant to be a beginning. It's meant to be meek. It's meant to be mild. It's, in terms, you're, you're saying in regards to him like being the face of this new movement, being involved with this well, anarchy movement. I, I'm stuck wondering what I'm supposed to feel about the Joker after this movie. You know, you're story, not supposed to root for him. Uh, but but that's not clear. I think that this movie I, I feel that. has an issue in terms of how it portrays him because it makes him incredibly sympathetic and it also makes him kind of glorified in a lot of ways. Now, yes, a lot of that is from inside his own head, but at the same time, it's like, one scene, we're supposed to feel real bad for him and root for him. He's a protagonist, so at some level, we're supposed to root for him, right? And so you're asking me to root for this awful person who also goes through awful things. But there's one moment that... So, yes, I agree. You are in the sense of you're kind of rooting for him. Now, oh, oh everything everything disappeared. Well, <laughs> oh, to no, live you technical... Like Power Rangers? Yes, it's not a surprise. <laughs> I mean... Power Ranger. I think Power the most embarrassing Power thing Ranger. was your desktop. Ouch. Hey, get some folders. Bro. All right. Well, we're going to behead <laughs> this night later on, folks. That'll be some deleted content. Um, so what, uh, the thing I, I actually kind of, I enjoyed, it shed light on, um, and I just kind of keep thinking of this, the, the famous quote, like, you either um, die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the mm. villain or understand the villain. And with, the, you know, with this, it kind of sheds light on, like, the whole Joker versus Batman thing. It's like, if Joker Joker was left for dead in society essentially, and now now Batman Bruce Wayne with his parents being slayed, it's, it's like now he's dead. now now he's now you know you feel like that scene was unnecessary. Oh my god, I've seen it like how many times now. <laughs> I thought it was nice that the Joker yeah. had a part of that, though. I, I, you know what would have been great if they had just done Mask of Zorro, and then you see them go down the alley. I don't need to see the pearls and all that again. It's just it's been done too many all times. All right, that's, that's fair. You could yeah. have just taken out the whole killing exactly and kind of just had Bruce about. standing right there. That's fair. It's just this, like Zazie Bates's character. You know, I thought that the twist of her not existing was fun. Yeah. But here's the thing. They had to go and be like, oh, remember this scene? Remember this scene? And I'm like, okay, I get it. You could have you just... I think it would have been tough to understand kind of what was going no, on with I, that. I thought it was very clear. The way she, her, her, her feeling, her reaction, she was terrified. That made, That's when it all clicked for me. I'm like, oh, Fair enough. Because it seemed wrong. Something seemed wrong about this. I'm like, there's no way this guy's stable enough or in any way... Someone who who could you know like be attracted the, the way that he just like walks into her apartment yeah like that's all. Pure I think the only thing that I was confused by was what happened with the kiss, because that, that had, wasn't real. That, yeah, no, that it was wasn't real, right? But not happen. Yeah, was it in his mind or was he invisibly making out with somebody? You know, like that's that was the one thing that just kind of stuck out to well, me. If of, I'm gonna a lot of flashbacks, a lot of halluc like not hallucinative states, but like when people who um, and like I do not know what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna <laughs> preface this real quick. But <laughs> no having, degree for this yeah, whatsoever. I, having witnessed people every who have experienced flashbacks or, or otherwise like not experiencing reality as it is in front of you or I. It, they're not doing anything different. They're probably locked in like what looks most like a vegetative state. Yeah, I don't think it's unlikely that he was imagining himself doing all that, or that when he was walking around on the street that he was imagining her next to him. Yeah, I mean that's the whole thing. I mean, I I don't know whether he actually did if the cop car at the end did get hit and if he did get like that seemed. I wanted to believe that that happened, but like at the same time, that's where it seemed mm -hmm. to be the the switch happened to 
fantasy. Again. No, that's fair. If I could briefly backtrack before my yeah, yeah, laptop yeah. decided to betray me. So there's so there are points where you do begin to regretfully root for the character when he discovers the truth about his mom and then spoiler alert, kills his mom yeah. because it's a total stranger to or, him. Or like when yeah. the, the health services get taken away from him. Right, and believe me, I'm not rooting for said character, but there are points where you're like... He's a protagonist, like yeah. I said. You kind of but need to the moment him. where you go, oh man, I can't root for this guy anymore, is when he absolutely brutally murders the guy that gave him the gun at the beginning of the movie with the scissors. Because, yeah. Now, there was yeah. a reason for why he did it. It wasn't unjustified, but... It was brutal and savage and yeah, animalistic, yeah, yeah. and that was the moment you knew that you couldn't root for him. Leading on to that, the moment where he dons the Joker mm. makeup and the song plays. No one yeah. walking into this movie was expecting to root for him, though. That's the problem. Is that like this movie? But I it was think... meant. But pe but it was meant to make you uncomfortable, so you don't know how to feel. Oh, the oh movie, yeah. The movie to movie add yeah. insult to Brandon's that. raising his hand, completely agreeing. No, 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 no. No one walked into the Dark Knight expecting to root for Heath Ledger, but yeah. but Heath Ledger was not the protagonist of that film. So you should identify with him even less. Well, of course, but I mean the fact. We that should have brought you on, Brandon. <laughs> look at what. Look at the repercussions of Heath Ledger's Joker. Is yes. what I'm saying. That's fair. That's fair. But there's also the point when Joker dons the makeup and he's going down the stairs and he's dancing to the Gary Glitter song. Keep in mind yeah. the Gary Glitter song. Uh, Gary Glitter, obviously. Uh, a I, I, accused of having child pedophilia in his computer, not accused, actually has. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. So to, that kind of adds insult to injury and people are grossed out like, how could they pick this song? This feels so unnecessary. The song fit the mood. The song yeah, fit the mood. Yeah. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. You're not supposed to root for Joker when he dons the makeup. Normally the superhero puts on the suit and you're like, yeah, it's the real look. And you're not supposed to root for this guy at all. And it's that, and it's that sequence that perfectly illustrates that this movie should be a lesson, not something that you should idolize in any way, shape, or form. The movie just is very on the nose. Like, when at the end, when he's just like, society. He literally had to say the word society. And I'm like, like when he's like ranting about being like torn up and spit up, it's like, you showed me all that through this whole movie. You did such a great job doing it. And then you told me about it. That's fair. I think it actually would have been better if the dialogue was a little more choppy and a little more raw. Because I know, obviously, Arthur Fleck had the makeup, you know, and became the persona yeah. and was much more confident in his uh, in his walk and his style and his flair, but maybe if it was a personal moment, maybe the dialogue couldn't have been as, as crisp and well written, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah it, but, so my whole, and, and I'm the unfortunately the pure optimist of any movie, um, but for me the whole, like, putting on the makeup and putting on the, the suit it was kind of that uh, going back to the Nolan series, the no one cared who I was till I put on the mask. Yeah. So him walking out like that, and that was, you know, and then at the end with him standing in, in front of the cheering crowd, that that whole sequence was him becoming the Joker. I think that's his switch point to the Joker that we eventually know and love. That's right. Love. love. Um that, that's just my take. It's, no, I, hear I think it's, I hear you know, I think it's. I see where you're coming from. You said, because like you said, he couldn't lead a movement. I, at no point did I think this was going to lead to this big, massive, you know, gra gravitas movement. I don't mean to cut you off, gentlemen. I talk a lot. I don't mean to cut you off. Brandon is playing with some wires in the background because he's bored and not on yeah, camera. So I got to yeah. go. I got to go help him out. I'm wires. sorry, guys. You guys can continue this oh, yeah. without me. You have enough experience. Uh, yeah, Wayne, you, you take over. All right, yeah. yeah. Fine, I'm just going to take over. Hey, Hi, everyone, I'm Wayne. I hated this movie. I absolutely despised it. It was the single most boring movie I think I've watched in like the last five years. I was like, look, he can feel bad for you. I'm going to feel so bad for you. I was like, everything that they did to this guy, they just like, oh, look, bad thing, bad thing, bad thing, bad thing. Constantly bad things. All the time. It was a sequence of bad things. Yeah. It was. It was a lot of them. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> I was like, have you, Have you guys seen Taxi Driver? Because this movie is Taxi Driver. And King of Comedy. And I haven't seen King of Comedy, but now I really want to see it. Cause yeah. It's supposed to be a really good movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I was like, let, let's just borrow those two Scorsese movies, which I'm a big fan of Scorsese. Whether or not what he says about comic book movies is irrelevant to this point. <laughs> I was like, let's just borrow those see, two. Did you see the irony in that, though? I did. Right? I mean, I, oh, the I balls see of having Robert De Niro in this film. Yes, yeah. that was a big thing, too. But I was like, all right, so he, you, you're supposed to feel really bad for him. But I was like, he never once tries to do anything that makes him, like, likable at all. Like, I liked Arthur Fleck. I thought he was a, a sad person. But at the same time, I've met people like that. I've been friends with people like yeah, that. Yeah, feel for him. Yeah, I was like, the only two people in that movie that were actually, like, decent human beings 
was the clerk that was at Arkham. When yeah. he, he found, yeah, that dude was good. He was trying to help out. He was trying to help out. Like he didn't have to go down. Like, I'm sorry, fight. man. The law's the law. <laughs> and, then, and then the midget. But I don't trust midgets because I don't trust anyone that's at cross level. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, in any case, I gotta say that scene <laughs> was intense. Um, that scene was very reasons. intense, and I really liked it. I, I liked... appreciated how uh, the you know his his crying made the murder that much more intense. Yeah, it's I, just like, I liked... People don't really cry when people get murdered in movies. Yeah, they're just you know? like, like yeah. just like, oh my god, oh no, why are you doing this? And he's like, oh fuck, why are you doing this, my friend? And I'm like, I really felt for it. I was, I, the other part too was like, the guy and, that the guy that gave him the gun is basically the world's biggest jackass. Oh yeah, yeah what a piece of shit that guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, so Sorry, Barney. So you're telling me you didn't feel any sort of sim- you didn't like I, him it, at all. It, it he was taking care of his mother. You didn't think he was like no any because like every little, time every time that like, yeah, his mother was his kind mother of a piece of shit. Abusive. Yeah, his mother. Doesn't matter, but you still take care of like, your mom. Though. Like your mom took care. Oh yeah, take no, care I, I understood that. that. And it was like, oh, let's just make sure his mom's psychopathic. Like, uh, and I also yeah. thought that like that, and then the over like the the weird like hate the rich undertones that was very odd. No, that I thought was one of the things that helped motivate things yeah. well. Oh, because yeah. it, like, like, it worked like, really well. Let's go off and kill Eric Trump because, you know, that guy, the, like the taller guy, looked just like him. They, I, turned, I have a they tried to make him look when it comes a lot. to Wayne in this movie. Thomas Wayne. Yep. Okay. I kind of liked that they made him an asshole. Yeah. I did too. And but that I they like, made him like this, like, oh, I'm going to do it because uh, this is what I believe in. Because you know what? <laughs> Honestly, I thought that made him more like, likely to get shot than the Thomas Wayne we get in the Nolan verse, where he's like, "This guy's a, a bastion of goodness." Why he's he's a beacon of good hope. He's helping everyone. He's such a good boy. Yes, but like I was like, and then, then as you said, it wasn't even the Blade of Zorro. It was Zorro the Gay Blade, which yeah. was a movie that was released, I think, in 1981. Yeah, it's actually a pretty funny comedy. Oh yeah, um, you mentioned the date, and that reminds me of a big problem I have with this movie. Well, I have very respect. Uh, oh, hi, Mary. Hi, hi. Brandon's, he's, he was off in his own world, but we, he's uh, we got him fixed up. Yeah. All right, bye-bye, buddy. All right. Oh, okay. Well, hot I'm just hot take Wayne over here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just had to take a hot take, everyone. One thing, All right, well, that was enjoyable. One thing I want to add real quick. Um, sure, yeah. I thought it was jarring, and it hit me in the movie, and I didn't really know what it was until someone had pointed it out online later, uh, that it was strange having a viral video in 1981. Like, why would they be recording a tape at a at a comedy club? You know, like an open mic night. Uh, no one notable was there. It was just like, or I think that maybe maybe the guy before him was it's, somewhat notable. It sounded to me like the owner of the club was just, he always passes off things to Murray. Kind of just to add, like, oh, we That's got these really bad... Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it helps fill space on the show. No, but why would I don't come know, on? When did to, when did camcorders come out? Like found like, footage, like that sort of thing would be on a late night talk show. Like, just because it was in a New York, not found club. footage. I think it's just not part of footage. the cam that's there, part of the club. Because I'm sure they had. But like he said, it went around. He said it went around a lot. Tapes didn't really like. I know you can copy a tape. You can pass it to somebody. I just and that was like in a easy, couple though. days. I don't. That I think. Was I think the news. I think the news probably would have had a big. Thing about it, the like, news didn't do it though. It was passed. It wasn't yeah, on the yeah. news. It was just. Uh, it was just on the Murray Show. The Murray Show yeah. is what got it on the news. Yeah. So my point is, is that it basically used the logic that we're very used to in today's society of a viral video, something that gets passed around that quickly in a day, in hours, and because. The timing is always difficult in movies when you first watch it to know exactly when this, this is happening mm-hmm. versus that. Um, it's tough to say without having to do a rewatch, but I feel like that was spread around a little too quick. Yeah, but also people Murray called in. Quick. People call into the studio. As After a... it was shown. How did Murray yeah. get it that quickly is my problem. Once once it was How did Murray air, get the video? Yeah, I don't really The buy... comedy club owner sent it to him. You yeah. know, Here, I got this Murray... great... Murray said it was passed dumb, around this by, dumb not by guy. the comedy owner, but by someone. He didn't really mention it. If I, I maybe misremembered. Oh yeah. My point is, is that like I really feel that that it was kind of an out of time. It was kind of just. It didn't really consider the period in which it was set in that instance because that's something that we're really more used to today than we were even twenty years ago. That's fair. Well, this movie is going to be dissected for a long period of time, especially leading right up to the uh, Oscar nominations announcement, I'm assuming, and probably the Uh, Oscars themselves. That being said, let us know what you think about the movie Joker down in the comments below. Be sure to like the video, share the video with all your friends, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Stay tuned for our upcoming Instagram account because we're really excited about that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Getting on the gram. gram. Mm -hmm. Probably doing other things digital wise thanks so much for joining us guys we will see you next time on knights of the dirty table